Good afternoon, everybody. This is Keys to Victory Ministries. You enjoy coming with Keys to Victory Ministries. And I have another wonderful message for you today. I'm so excited. God has great things in store for you. And so let's pray. So, Father God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I pray that every person that is hearing this message is going to set them free and help them find the blueprint for their life. God, I think you have answers. I thank you, Father God, you can put people's lives back together and help them get on the path of righteousness that you have for them, the path that you have laid out for them. I thank you and I praise you now, God. I yield my heart, I yield my words, I yield my, I yield my mind to you tonight. You speak through me, you teach through me, you express through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so here we go. So, first thing I'm going to say to you is this. Um, this message is something that God has spoke to me um, several years ago, and now he's brought it back up again, which is really cool. So, I think it's because it's needed for this day and hour. Okay, so I'm going to ask you some questions, and these questions are like, are you feeling like something's missing? Or... Are you feeling frustrated, like you've lost your way? Or have you recently come to a place where you feel stuck? And, or that you're in transition. People tell me all the time, I'm in transition. I, do, I don't know, I can't get out of transition. Or has someone betrayed you? Or are you struggling with a broken heart? Or are you just having a hard time navigating through confusion. God has answers for you today. You're going to be amazed how God's going to pull you up out of that. You know the story about Humpty Dumpty, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall, and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, and all the king's men and all the king's horses couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But guess what? God can put you back together again. God can bring that broken situation and bring it to mending because he is a God. The blood of Jesus says that he reconciles all things back to itself. So he can reconcile. He can bring things back together. Because you know we have a covenant with him. And in that covenant is wholeness, healing, deliverance, salvation. But it also means that's shalom, okay? That's the name of the, the our covenant is peace. But in that word peace is the word shalom. And you know what that means? Shalom, shalim. And it means nothing broken, nothing missing. Today, you may feel like something's missing in your life. Or you may feel like something's broken. But God is going to give you a blueprint of how to bring you on the path of restoration. And cause you to be fruitful once again. Today it's going to happen as you follow along. So how in the world did I come across this message or even wanted to share this message? I asked the Lord, what did you want me to teach? He said, I want you to teach the concept that I have given you because the people need to hear this concept. So here we go. And, and so in 2020, I'm going to give you the backstory of this. In 2020, there was a lot of confusion that went on and a lot of chaos to the point that people was losing their business and even people were scheduled to get married. They couldn't get married. Things had to be canceled. Um, people were dying all around and there was no answers. And so I posed a question to the Lord and I said, how, how Lord do we go forward in the midst of chaos and confusion. And he was so sweet, which he always is when we ask him. He loves it when we ask him. He loves it when you ask him questions. And so I asked him, here's what he said to me. He said, remember the concept I gave you on the road to Grants Pass, Oregon. Oh, Lord, that was so many years ago. And he brought it back to me. 
See what's really cool about the Lord? He's a God of full circles, and he will bring it around. And when he brings it around, that's because he's given you an opportunity for a miracle. God will bring it around over and over when he wants to bring a miracle into your life. So he reminded me, and so I'm going to tell you the story. So as he was reminding me and bringing this back to my memory, he spoke to me about how, uh, here's what happened to me is I was being led by the Lord. I had an opportunity to go to Grants Pass, Oregon. And I prayed about it, and the Lord opened the door wide open. So I'm finding myself on the mountain. I've never driven mountains before. And here's my little boy, and he's going to be going his first year of high school, but he's really young and because he's just getting out of junior high. And there was no GPS. So here he is. He's guiding me on these mountains, and I'm driving away. And I said to the Lord, Lord, how in the world is this going to work out? I don't have a job. Um, I don't have, you know, I don't have an income. I, I don't know exactly where we're going to live. And we we're going to stay with some friends for a while until I could get a job. But it would seem like, how am I going to get this boy in, in high school? He'd never been in high school. He'd come from junior high. And this town happened to put you in high school in ninth grade. So this was going to be a real uh, change for my son, my little, my youngest son. So, and he just so sweetly spoke to me a concept. And I was like, Lord. So now fast forward. I'm here in 2020, and the Lord's reminding me of the concept. The Lord is beginning to remind me of the concept that he gave me during that time, all those years ago. And so, because during that time as I was driving the mountain, there were so many unknowns. I had no answers to what was going to happen. I had no answers. All I knew is God was leading me, like Abraham. Abraham didn't have any answers, and God told him, go, you know, go to the land. But he didn't even know where he was going. He just left, left, and went, how oh, God was leading him. That's how it was. The Lord was saying, come on, I'm leading you out. And so he did give me a concept which was so powerful. And what I want to share with you is you need to know something. You need to know that God has a plan. He has a blueprint inside of you. And he has a plan for your spirit. He has a plan for your soul. He has a plan for your body. And I'm going to teach you about that today. Because we sometimes think we're just we kind of mesh ourselves together, spirit, soul, and body. But really, folks, we are supernatural beings, and you've heard me say this before, we're supernatural beings having a human experience. And how we have a human experience is usually through our soul, which makes up of our mind, will, and emotions, and our body. So here, here I was, you know, kind of in a place having definitely a human experience because I'd never been on a mountain like this driving and I was going to uh, in a situation where there was a lot of unknowns okay God has a plan for your spirit your soul and your body we are tr three beings we are triune beings spirit soul and body and in those processes the spirit how the how what helps the spirit is the scripture says, ask that your joy may be full. See, the Lord loves it when you put a level of expectation on him. When you put a level of expectation on the Lord, he loves it. And the word says, ask that your joy may be full. Now, the soul makes up the mind, will, and emotions. And, the, and what happens is the soul has to be ministered to as well and what makes up the soul is your mind and that's why the scripture says renew your mind so you'll know what's the good the accept and perfect will of God also the mind loves maps okay and then another thing is your body your body now here's the parts of your body when you're feeling hopeless 
you're feeling angry, you're feeling emotional, you're out of alignment. Now I'm going to teach you these processes going to help you get into alignment with God. And that's what happens. Sometimes we just feel hopeless, we feel edgy, we feel upset. That's because we're out of alignment with God. See, because here's the deal. Your spirit, when, when you do this process, I'm going to teach you, what happens is it puts you into, you begin to go forward and bring forth what's in the natural into the supernatural. And I'm going to show you how you do it. Now, another thing I want to share with you is this. The Lord was speaking to me this process, and that was about words. Words. Did you know your words are pregnant with life and death? Yeah, your words are pregnant with life and death. The word says life and death are in the power of your tongue. And I'm going to talk to you about this for a minute. And I'm going to tell you a story about David. And so David, here's David. He showed up on the scene um, because his dad sent him with some uh, cheese and, you know, and to check on his brothers because they're in, you know, suited up for battle. And here is Goliath and he's taunting, he's taunting and mocking the Israelites. He's, these, these men are used to being warriors. And they're petrified because this is a giant. And do you have a giant in your life? This was a giant. And they were petrified. So here's what happened. David shows up on the scene. And what I want you to know is the enemy tries to break our focus. This process I'm going to teach you is going to help you get focused. Because the enemy's job is to break your focus. So anyway, he shows up on the scene, and first thing happens to him, the very first thing happens to him, his older brother comes over to him and says, what are you doing here? Aren't you out there supposed to take care of your few sheep? They treated him really bad. Now, he had an opportunity at that moment, and we have opportunities when the, when, when the enemy will use family members or use people to mock us, he could have said, you never want me around. What have I done now? He could have, he could have said, you know, poor me. You know, I, you never want me around. I'm only here because dad told me to come here. You know, I'm not, you know, yeah, I'm going to go back to my sheep. He could have been angry and he could have missed the will of God. But instead, he turned. He turned. His first opportunity was, first temptation was, to be offended but instead he didn't answer he turned he didn't answer his brothers he turned and he looked at the kind of a crowd was gathering and he said tell me because what I'm hearing is there's kind of reward there's a reward for someone takes down the giant and they said oh yeah there's a there is a huge reward he's he, the king's gonna give his daughter and you won't have to pay taxes and you can live in the palace David said, okay, that sounds good. So he was letting them know that he could do this. So somebody snuck out of the crowd and went over to King Saul and said, hey, there's a kid out here who thinks he can take this giant. And so Saul said, yeah, bring him on in. So he comes in, and now here's his second thing. Remember, words are pregnant with life or death. Remember this. So here's, the, here's what King Saul, he says to him, Okay, you know, son, you're just a lad, you're just a young man, and what makes you think you can, you know, I'm hearing you think you can take the giant out. He says, well, he said, through God, I slay the bear, and through God, I slay the lion, and through God, I will slay the sun circumcised Philistine. And Saul's like, whoa, don't you understand this giant has been a warrior since he was a child? But he said, well, nevertheless, if you think you can do it, kid, go ahead. Maybe you should put my armor on. So he tried to put his armor on. And, of course, the scripture says it was not tested. He couldn't manage it. So he said, no, thank you. And he put it to the side. That was a test because he was being mocked of his youth and what makes him think that he can take out the giant. Do you have a giant in your life? 
It's going to take words. The next step is he goes out to meet the giant. Well, the giant is like so insulted. Like he says, what am I, a dog? You come to me with sticks and, a and, and stones? Am I a dog? But you see, what you don't know is the backstory about that stick. See, what they did with the sticks, especially prophets, they would etch on the stick their miracles or their victories. And probably King Sam, you know, Samuel knew David. Okay, So he probably gave him that stick. So here he is. He's going out there. And then and the devil in, in, in a Goliath is like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where'd that stick come from? He was intimidated. But then he said, hmm, you're just a kid. And he says, I'm going to feed you. So he sends forth words. Listen to what I'm saying. The giant sends forth words. That's what the enemy does to us. In your giant situation, the enemy sends forth words to intimidate you. And so he says to him, well, today I'm going to feed your carcass to the birds of the air. I'm going to feed you to the, to the ravens. I'm going to feed you to the, you know, the birds. So he's trying to intimidate him. And he, he describes how he's going to, you know, kill him and then his carcass is going to be fed. But David, once again, words. Here's his giant. David says, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whom I am a representative of the armies of the living God. Uh, you are uncircumcised, and I'm coming to you by the name of the Lord. And he says, and today I'm going to feed your carcass to the birds of the air, and I'm going to take your head. He used words. See, God is showing us we use words. We need to use words on our giant. Do you have a giant? We need to learn to use words. So anyway, we know the story is, of course, he went towards Goliath, and he took him out. God sent that stone right into his head and knocked him down, and he ran over there. And this interesting thing is, and I know this may sound gruesome, but let me tell you, God spoke this to me. God spoke to me that he trained David to take this giant. Because most people could not handle taking the head off of a person. I mean, think about it. That's gruesome, right? And he was able to go over there, jump up on that giant, when he knocked him down, and take his head off. Why? Because he was already being trained by animals taking down animals to save his sheep. See, God is always training us. He's always training us to take down our giant. We just need to recognize the training that he has for us. And you're being trained this very day. You're going to learn how to deal with your giant problem that you can't get past. So he ran over there, jumped on his chest, and cut his head off with his own sword, with Goliath's sword. Now, the reason why I'm telling you words are so important. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. He spoke words. Over here in Hebrews, it talks about how we frame our world. God framed our world by the words of his mouth. The word says, as he is, so are we on this earth. So you see, we create our world by the words of our mouth. Now, to get to this concept. So here I am. I'm on my way to Grants Pass. And I said, Lord, he's telling me, uh, you know, he has a blueprint. He has a plan for me. And this is what he says. The plan is, is that I'm going to create a map through you. I thought, okay. He said, I want you to use your alphabet and come to me and ask me about the burden. Now, my burden, my heart is don't have beds, don't have blankets, 
but really don't have provisions except when we stay at a person's house. But I don't have the things I need so we can move and have our own place. And so the Lord starts working with me, ask me joy, ask me joy. And see, the Lord can bring this down and manifest it for you, but he chooses to partnership with you. He wants to partnership with you because he wants to manifest his power and glory through you. He needs you to be a willing vessel. So I said, okay, Lord, so I'm driving away on this road, this mountain, which it wasn't one mountain, several mountains before I could get to Grants Pass. And here I'm, I'm driving on the mountain and I'm starting to declare, okay, Holy Spirit, what would you have me declare over the letter A? And he started giving me words. I was like, okay. And I started speaking those words. And I said, okay, and here's what he told me. The word says in Job, and I'm going to read to you over here in Job. You need to know this. In Job 22, 28, it says, Declare a thing, and it will be established, and light will shine upon the path. Now see, here's the key is, when you declare something, the word says it will be established. So it's like what the Lord was showing me. My words were like seeds. I, we're supposed to be like farmers. The word talks about this, and I'm going to probably do this in a two-part series to help you understand it better. But see, our words are like seeds, and so he was wanting me to prepare my path before I ever got there. So as I was asking him, Holy Okay, Holy Spirit, concerning this path I'm going to be going on, what is the letter A that you would have me declare? See, when you declare it, it will be established. In other words, God wanted to establish something in my life, but he needed my cooperation because the kingdom of God is activated by the words of your mouth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is activated by the words of your mouth. It's not activated when you think about it. It's not activated when you write about it. It's not activated until you give voice to it. This is important. Okay, so I started declaring, okay, in Jesus' name, Lord, give me words for A, give me words for B, and he did. He gave me words, words, words. And see, what I want to share with you, and I will teach this further in part two, is that each one of us has a field. Each one of us has a field. And see, the Lord says, it is my will that you bear fruit. You know, in Psalms 1, it says, you will bear fruit in your season, and whatever you do will prosper. How does that happen? How do you bear fruit? You bear fruit because you have to plant seeds. And so you have this field, and what are you going to do with it? And so here it is, I have this field, I'm going forward, I need to be able to go forward. 2020, I need to go forward. When I was going to Grants Pass, I needed to go forward. There was no answers, but there was a field. And so God was saying, now declare A, declare B. What do I have for B? What do I have for C? What do I have for D? And I partnered with the Holy Spirit, and he spoke to me. He is faithful to speak to you. He wants to partner with you. So here's what happened is it's a field, and in order to get a harvest, you must plant seed. Now, some ministers say you got to plant seeds of money. All right, I've done that, and that works too. But also, you plant your seeds by the words of your mouth. This is key. Because what does it say? It says, if you declare a thing, it will be established. Do you need something established in your life? Let's get back to the giant. Do you have a giant situation? Do you have a situation that's facing you, that's mocking you? The giant was mocking the whole army of Israel. The giant was mocking the king of Israel, Saul. And God sent somebody with words to speak. What will be done for the one who takes him down? To speak. Through God is slayed a bear. Through God is slayed a a lion, and through God I will slay this uncircumcised Philistine. He gave words about his giant. Okay, 
So do you have a giant situation? I'm going to show you. Okay, so in this process, the Lord said, I'm going to create a map. The map is A through Z as you speak. And see why I'm telling you why God has a map. You know, the word map also is linked to the word blueprint. It's linked to the word, um, let's see, let's read it because <laughs> I wrote it down. It's linked to several words. It's linked to blueprint. It's linked to path. It's linked to game, game plan. Oh, God has a game plan. He has a blueprint inside of you. It's linked to the word strategy. This was a strategy from God that even though I had so many unknowns, God was giving me a map. He today is giving you a map for you to be able to go forward. Though there's chaos, though there's turbulence, though there's brokenness, though there's loss, though there's heartache, He's giving you a map. Another word that's linked to it is plan, connecting. Like I said, blueprint. So the map is created by you and the Holy Spirit. And the map is voice activated. Is that powerful? Okay, so we don't have a harvest because we don't put any expectation on the Lord to declare what we're believing for. In the process, on the way to Grants Pass, he had me declaring, declaring, declaring things. By the time I got to Grants Pass, it was so supernatural what happened. I got a job in a supernatural way, just like God said I would, because I declared it out my mouth. And how I got this job was supernatural. This woman was waiting for me. When God led me to the job, which was really supernatural, I get in there, and she says, I've been waiting for you, because God said, you're my replacement. I've never seen this woman in my whole entire life. But I spoke, I spoke it into existence, because I declared it on the mountain, on the way. So I know, I'm excited because, okay, I'm going to give you a testimony. I have a really good friend, and he was really struggling, he was at my Bible study. And he was really struggling financially. The man's brilliant, had lots of, you know, just very brilliant, but just was really stuck financially just going down. I mean, could barely make it with food, gas, everything. Didn't know what he was going to do if I was going to have to sell his house and just go live in a room somewhere. It was really serious. And so anyway, he was in my Bible study, and I give everybody a piece of paper and Tell them just, you know, draw whatever God's speaking to them. Because I like to do prophetic things like that. So he, he drew out this beautiful field. And God showed him, oh my goodness, the field is empty. You've got to fill it by the words of your mouth. So he did. He diligently declared, declared, declared. And he asked the Lord, got into partnership with the Holy Spirit. said, Holy Spirit, what's A? What's B? What's C? What's D? And he declared it. This isn't a one-time thing, by the way. You continually fill your field with seeds because the enemy tries to take your seeds out. Now I'm going to talk about that next week. He'll try and get your seeds out, but if you keep pouring seeds, seeds, seeds in there, you're going to get harvest. So he did, and today he's a very successful real estate man. Very successful, doing wonderful. But he filled his field with words activated the kingdom of God he filled it okay now see the reason why it's important this map is because your brain loves maps did you know that your brain loves maps and your brain okay it's part of your soul your mind will and emotions the mind loves maps I didn't even realize it so when the Lord said there's going to be a map I thought okay and then later on I find out how the brain loves maps because otherwise we're just all over the we're all over the place sometimes but see when you start honing in with the Holy Spirit, it makes a difference because you start getting focused. Remember what I told you in the beginning? The enemy wants to break your focus. He's after your focus, so he'll cause you to be intimidated. He'll cause you to be offended. Get your family to be offended. Get your family to be offended. You say things that will hurt you, so you'll respond, so you'll break your focus. 
this map gets you focused. And what I learned is I wrote it down and then I begin to speak it because it's like I'm watering the seed. I plant the seed, water the seed by speaking it. Plant the seed, water the seed by speaking it. This is so important. I can't tell you how important this is. I can't tell you how I have seen so many things evolve around me by me doing this. It's a blueprint. It's a game changer. God has it for you today. God wants you to line up with him, with the plan that he has for you. And Jeremiah says, have plans for you, plans for good, to bring an acceptable good end in your life. A good, he has a good plan for you. But you've got to partner with like I shared with you, the kingdom of God is voice activated. It's so funny. I got into this and I didn't get to the scriptures to help you understand how important this is to God. In Psalms 90 verse 12, it says he will teach us how to make our days count. He's saying, I want your days to count. Do you feel like your days are days in and days out, months in, months out? You're unproductive and you're not bearing fruit, the word says he will teach us how to make our days count to give us a heart of wisdom. It's important to God that your days count. And then another scripture says we are to command our mornings. In part two, I'm going to share more about that. But number three is Psalms 101.8, and it says, morning after morning, I will root up all the wicked in the land that I may eliminate all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. Morning. Yeah, morning. Then there's another scripture about day and night. Day uttering speech. Let me see if I can't find it because I wrote it down. This is really important about day uttering speech Holy Spirit where is it oh another thing when we talk about the field there's a scripture about the field and it's in um, Psalms 24 7 and it says prepare Psalms 24 27 prepare your field prepare your field first and then build your house See, he's saying to you, prepare your field. Release your words so you can get a harvest and then build your house. Prepare your field first and then build your house. Psalms 24, 7. If we don't plant, I want to tell you, we won't have a harvest. That's important. That's so important. We're to plant words. And the Lord gave me this concept when I prayed and I said, how do I go forward? How do I go forward on this mountain, getting to where I'm going? And then how do I go forward in 2020? I lost my job. People are in trouble everywhere. How do I go forward? And he spoke this concept to me again. I declare in Jesus' name that you're grasping what I said. Because this is so important what I taught you today. And there will be a part two on it. So you'll have more understanding. But I give you the concept. And now it's up to you to partner with the Holy Spirit. You just say, Holy Spirit, what would you have me declare over A? Think about the burden. Think about that giant that's in your life. Is it judicial? Is it family? Is it your health? What is it? And it's Holy Spirit, what would you have me declare over A? Listen to him and write it down. I declare over A because what I declare shall be established. Know that you this a spiritual this is a scripture that will not be broken. It is a promise. If you declare it, it will be established. 
and light will shine upon your path. If it's your health, you say, Holy Spirit, what would you have me declare over it? Come into partnership with me, Holy Spirit. What would you have me declare over A? What would you have me declare over B? And listen to him and write it down. And then once you get the whole A through Z, then you turn around and you say, okay, Lord, then you go back and you water your seeds. I declare and give it voice. See, it's very important. The kingdom of God, I cannot say it enough. The kingdom of God is activated, voice activated. You have to give it voice. That's how the, our world was established, by the words of our mouth. Jesus said to Satan when he was in the wilderness, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In Proverbs it says, have, it says these words, life and death are in the power of the tongue. There's power in the tongue. Your life, your words are pregnant with life. They are. Give your field life filled words, and you'll get a harvest. Let's pray. Father God, I pray right now in Jesus' name that this message will go far and wide, and once again, it will not return void, but it will accomplish the purpose into what I sent it. Lord, I have sowed seeds now into these people, and I'm going to declare that they're going to create their maps, and they're going to see harvest, and they're going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. They're going to see their giants come down. They're going to see their help spring forward. They're going to see their relationships be restored. They're going to see their children come out of rebellion. They're going to see miracles because you said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. I praise you. I thank you, God. This word, this that I've taught today will not return void, but it will accomplish the purpose until I have sent it, and I declare it. And what I declare, it's going to be established in your life today. It's going to be established, and light is going to shine upon your path. In Jesus' name, God bless you.